Hello everyone, on today's episode of Tinkering with Terrius we are going to do some computer stuff. I am going to be installing a new CPU cooler into my computer from the basement here that I normally use to record the audio for my videos. I've noticed that the CPU is starting to run pretty hot when the computer is under full load so I wanted to get something that was quieter and something that would perform a bit better. So the system has a 3770K from Intel in it and it is just using the stock CPU cooler right now. The CPU cooler under stress is not handling it very well. It's certainly having a lot of thermal throttling when it's under 100% load. It's running all the way up to above 100 degrees Celsius, which is way above what it should be running at. So I want to get something that's a little bit better. So I got one of these NHD9L CPU coolers and I got it for about half price through Amazon warehouse deals because the box has some cosmetic damage on it. There's a dint in it here and some other places there's some scratches and things so I figured since it was on such a ridiculous deal I may as well get it and hopefully it will perform better than the current CPU cooler which I don't think is going to be very difficult to do so first let's open this up and take everything out and see what's inside I did break the tape and take a brief look just to make sure all of the accessories were already here and they are It basically looks like it is completely brand new. Everything's still sealed in its packages. Nothing has been opened. All of the components and everything are in the bags. And the box inside doesn't even have the finger holes poked in, so this was never returned or anything. It was literally a warehouse box damage item, which is what they had it sold as, so glad to see it was legitimately what they said. And let's see. Get this. Noctua is definitely known for box inception. Got a box inside of a box. I'm pretty restrained by what coolers I can use on this computer because it's a mini ITX board in the Prodigy mini ITX version from Bitfinex. Which means clearance isn't a terrible issue but it's difficult to put a proper tower cooler in it. There's our Noctua mirror finish. Let's see how good is the mirror. That's pretty, pretty good. Okay, so CPU cooler, and this is the computer. The unfortunate thing about this is that I'm going to have to tear apart the entire computer in order to put this cooler in. I'm going to have to take the motherboard out of the case. So the Prodigy case, everything is mounted vertically in here. Which means that when I open this up, we are going to be greeted with the GPU first. I'm going to take both sides off. So of course I have the SSD mounted here on the side. I'm not going to disconnect the SATA cable from the motherboard. I'm only going to disconnect it from the hard drive so that I can keep track of which is the SSD slot. It doesn't matter all that much because I don't have a RAID going on in here, but just to make life a little bit easier. And to denote that, I'm just sticking a piece of tape that says SSD to the cable here temporarily while we mess around inside. So we're going to have to remove graphics card.
we go. It is free. Got a little base to set this on now. So interestingly, I do have this marked already to show which port the SSD goes into. So I'm going to unplug the SATA cable. Let's see what we got here. We just have the Intel CPU cooler. So we're going to take this off and start working on installing the Noctua one. And there is the CPU ooh, thermal paste that is rock hard. 99% rubbing alcohol here. Piece of paper towel, couple of cotton swabs. I'm going to clean up the Intel CPU cooler just because. Now there's nothing inherently wrong about thermal paste that sets completely dry like that, but generally it doesn't have the same performance as thermal paste that continues to remain at least semi-liquid throughout its life. The size of the cooler is quite substantially different. This has a lot more cooling potential in it. Hopefully it will make a big difference. So we are going to install the backplate now. And this goes on lining up with these little holes. So now we remove the fan from the CPU cooler here because in order to get to the spring-loaded screws you're going to need to have the fan out. Okay, now we're going to install this all back into the computer case. So now we're just going to do a 10 minute ADA64 run on it and see what happens and how it compares to the previous results. Hopefully you can see on these stills here that the test ran successfully and it performed much better than the stock. And I have some graphs here that we can look at. So first up we have the stock heatsink graph. And on this graph I have bars for the package temperature and the four core temperatures. All of the temperatures in the graphs are in Celsius. The package temperature was hitting 105 degrees Celsius with the average being 102 degrees Celsius. We have two cores, core one and core two, that were also hitting 105 degrees Celsius as their max, and their averages were 101. Core three and core zero seem to perform the best, with core three being 102 degrees max and 95 average, and core zero being 104 degrees max and 97 average average. Now of course these temperatures are very very high for this CPU so there were spikes up to 15% thermal throttling on the CPU in order to maintain its temperature and try not to overheat of course. So the next chart here we have is the Noctua NH D9L performance chart. You can see that the temperatures are much lower on this chart. We maxed out on the package at 79 degrees Celsius with the average being 73 degrees Celsius. And you can see that at core 0 actually ran cooler than core 3 this time. I believe that's partially because of how the thermal paste was kind of dried up and not covering the entire CPU on the 
stock CPU cooler, but our highest temperature was a maximum of 80 degrees with the average temperatures being between 68 and 72. So this was a huge change, it made a big difference changing out that CPU cooler. Next chart we have is the difference chart. So this has both the Noctua and the stock heatsink numbers on it, and you can see the difference is quite large between the two. The Noctua is definitely outperforming the stock heatsink by a lot. So the difference in maximum temperature between the two was roughly 24% on the package, and the average difference was 28% on the package. So that's quite a large change in performance. Here we have is the temperature difference chart. So on the left here we have the average difference and on the right we have the maximum difference. And this is comparing the two temperatures. I added 0.8 degrees C to the Noctua temperatures in order to balance them out with what the testing of the stock heatsink to get these numbers. The average package temperature difference was 29 degrees. Core 2 got a difference of 30 degrees. Core 3 only had 26 degrees on average and 0 and 1 had 29 degrees. So we almost eliminated 30 degrees just by swapping out that CPU cooler. And you can see the max differences didn't change quite as drastically. The highest max difference was Core 0 getting 28 degrees cooler with the Noctua heatsink. Core 1 was 27 degrees cooler. Cores 2 and 3 were only 25 degrees cooler. And the package as a whole on maximum difference was 26 degrees. So here you can see the 20 second average data points for the package of the CPU. So I took one measurement every second for 20 seconds here. And then that's how we got our averages. So you can see that the package temperature was pretty consistent with the stock heatsink bouncing between 100 degrees and 105 degrees with a slight dip down into the 90s. With the Noctua cooler it stayed at about 75 degrees with spikes up to about 77 and dropping down as low as 63. The Noctua cooler is performing very very well. It is substantially quieter than the stock cooler even when it's running at maximum load. And the nice thing is that it very rarely has to run at maximum load, even under the 10 minute ADA64 test. It only ramped up to 100% a few times, it didn't ever stay at that full speed. Unlike the stock heatsink which was at maximum speed the entire time trying to keep up with the ridiculous amount of heat. Now of course IDA64 is not a real world benchmark or real world test, it is a stress test, so in real world applications the CPU isn't going to be stressed nearly this much. It was spiking up to 90 degrees when I was playing PUBG and other games on it, and now it shouldn't spike up nearly that high. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's the first time I've tried to use two cameras to do a recording for YouTube like this. As always, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the section below, or you can email them to me or tweet them to me. If you like this video, then be sure to give it a big thumbs up, and if you have anybody that might be interested in it, be sure to share it with them. Every like and share helps a ton with the YouTube algorithm, as do comments. If you haven't already, then be sure to subscribe to my channel, and hit the little bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you for watching, I hope you have a wonderful day.